Now we give each one a warm welcome to our midweek service this Wednesday evening, and we're going to commence tonight with the singing of the hymn 505. 505, it'll be on the screen before us, and let's sing to the glory of God, I have such a wonderful Saviour. We'll sing as, um, uh, to the Lord together. now seek the Lord's face together in prayer, and we'll each one still our hearts as we come together into the Lord's presence. Our loving God and our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee this evening that we can seek Thy face together in the Saviour's great name. And we do thank Thee, our Father, that the way has been opened for us into Thine immediate presence we come by the new and living way, and we come, our Father, claiming the Saviour's precious blood as our only means of acceptance before Thee. But we thank Thee tonight, our Father, that we have that assurance from Thy Word that Thine ear is attentive unto the voice of our supplications. Thou art one, O God, who delights in the prayers of His children, and we pray that each one of our hearts would be drawn out afresh after thee this evening. And, O oh, Father, we would know here thy presence to be our abiding portion. We want to thank thee, our Father, for thy great love. And we praise thee for the giving of thine only begotten Son. And we thank thee, our Father, for the one who set his face as a flint to go to Jerusalem and even there outside the city wall, he laid down his life 
that he might take it again. And we praise thee for that substitutionary, that sacrificial death upon the tree. And we rejoice tonight, our Father, that as we look by faith to our Lord and Savior, we can say in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of thy grace. And we do thank thee, our Father, for ever setting thy love upon us and forever saving our souls. And we pray tonight, O God, that as we meet together here, that thou wouldst be one of our number. May the power of God the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us, and may our coming together be used to the glory and praise of our Lord and Savior. We remember our Father, all who are gathered tonight, and we pray that each one, O God, would even know thy blessing personally and individually. We do pray for our homes tonight. We pray for our family circles, that each one, O God, would know thy divine protection, thy preserving hand, and all oh, that thy loving arms would be round about each one of them. And we remember those tonight, our Father, who are unable to meet with us, and we pray for them. And we ask, O oh God, that they would know thy presence tonight and would know the grace of God uh, to be sufficient for them. There are those tonight, our Father, who are unwell. There are those who are in their homes tonight. There are those, our Father, who are being bereaved, and we commit them lovingly to thee. And we ask, O oh God, that thou wouldst grant tonight even the comfort of God the Holy Spirit. May they know that Emmaus Road experience that Jesus himself would draw near and would go with them. And, O oh, Father, we pray that thou thyself would comfort as only thou canst do. And, O oh, Lord, tonight we pray that here our brother Sam would know that help from heaven. And, Lord, we thank thee for even his desire uh, to go to the Isle of Man. We thank thee for traveling mercies taking them there and bringing them back again safely. And Lord, for thy hand upon him, even while he was there, and for being able to use him, O God, to encourage the folks in that little work, and even to reach out to others by way of evangelism. And as our brother would come tonight, O God, we pray that he would know help from heaven, and thou wouldst bless him and encourage him in his own soul. And O Lord, make him a blessing to each one that is gathered tonight. So, Father, hear our prayer and continue with us now and receive of our thanks. We offer it in the Saviour's great name. Amen. We'll sing another hymn together. If you're using the book, it's the hymn 519. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore, but to us he gives the keeping of the lights along the shore will stand again as we sing.
Amen. Well, as we take our seats together, I want to thank each one of you for being here this evening, and we want to give a special welcome to our brother, Mr. Sam Houston, one of our own members here in Hillsborough. As you will be aware, he had a recent trip to the Isle of Man uh, to minister God's word there in the small congregation, and we thought it would be appropriate to ask Sam to bring us a brief report tonight of his visit there, and we're looking forward to hearing that. And we have a bonus as well. He's going to start off with a message in song. So we'll ask Sam to come just now, please. Thank you. First of all, I want to say to each and every one that uh, I'm delighted to see there's a whole heap of chairs filled, and that's uh, very kind of you to come and hear this old fella. But uh, anyway, thank you, Mr. Kenny, for your uh, request for me to tell the folk something about the Isle of Man and the work there. Now, I'm going to try and keep the, move, the wheel moving because I can be long-winded. And without any further ado, I'm going to sing uh, a song here. I've yet to be speaker on. 90%. 90%. 90%. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I thought I would sing a wee song. I sang a lot of the songs over uh, in the Isle of Man, and I thought I would sing one here to encourage you, my brethren and sisters in the Lord, because we all know we're in a battle, and I think this song is a great song for the evening. I hope you like it. I know a lot of you have heard it, but you're going to hear it again anyway. Amen. All my comrades see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the mighty host advancing, Satan leading on. Mighty men around us falling, courage almost gone. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the glorious banner waving, hear the trumpet blow. In our leader's name we'll triumph, over every foe. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. Fierce and long the battle rages, but our help is near. Onward comes our great commander, cheer, my comrades, cheer. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. 
by thy grace we will. Thank you very much. <laughs> Seems kind of odd talking to a speaker, doesn't it? That's a great wee job there. Well, I didn't have wee thing there, but there you are. That's uh, progress for you. Well now, folks, let us turn, if we will, please, to God's holy word. I'm going to read some verses uh, from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, and uh, from verse 15. Of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Just bear with me, get the wee bit of room here. There we are. Second Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as, a, as doth a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour and some to dishonour. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. We thank the Lord for the joy that we have in reading God's holy word. Just want to just mention at the verse 21 it says there, meet for the master's use. Meet for the master's use. I thank Almighty God for the opportunity to be meet for the Master's use, to be fit, to be in the Lord's work, as we all are, every one of us. There's not one of us excluded. We're all workers for together for the Lord. But I want to, before I bring the message to you, friends, I want to thank you sincerely beforehand for your prayers and goodwill and practicality uh, as I sought to get ready to go to the Isle of Man. And the reason why I'm thanking you now is because I mightn't even get to the end of my message. And we all know that that's a very solemn uh, thing to say. But the Lord knoweth the way we take. Anyway, let us have a little word of prayer together, asking God's help. I've got notes with me here. And uh, to tell you the truth, if I didn't have the notes... I could maybe give you the beginning at the end and the middle at, uh, at, at, uh, the, middle at the, the beginning. So <laughs> I'm not as eloquent as uh, your reverence here. He has everything under control better than me. But praise the Lord. We are what we are, and we're not duplicates. Well, praise the Lord. We're not all made out of the same mold. Sure we're not. Anyway, let us ask God's help, please. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that thou hast accepted us in the beloved. We thank you, Lord, that thou hast received us, Lord. And, Lord, that's wonderful every day, Lord, we're waking up, Father, to know that we are safe in the arms of Jesus and that there's nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our dear Savior. And our Father, we pray, Lord, that as I bring this message uh, about the Isle of Man now, Lord, that you give me help, Lord. I'm very conscious, Lord. Even as I get older, I get more nervous. 
And Lord, I need thy help. So Lord, I pray you'll keep me to the point and that I might get this message over in a timely way, Lord. Father, I ask it, giving thee thanks, Lord, for every one that's gathered in. Bless every home that's represented, Lord. And Father, I pray that, Lord, together, Lord, we'll, we'll keep on marching on for thee. For we know, Lord, we knoweth not what a day may bring forth. So, Father, may this message, Lord, be a blessing to each one of us, Lord. And help us, Lord, as we are conscious that we need thee. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. And for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, my friends, I'll probably be reading this off as I go along and try to keep my finger in the right place. All right, so just bear with me if you will. But about mid-January, I received a telephone call from the Reverend Wesley McDowell asking me if I would go and look after the work of God in the Isle of Man. I felt honored, and that's a fact, I felt honored that here uh, God has given me another opportunity to serve him, to serve indeed the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I very thankfully agreed to go for two weeks, and to tell you the truth, when I was there, I could have stayed on longer, but that's another story. I took about three days preparing the messages uh, from God's Word and also Gospel songs. And I want to thank the Lord for my wee brother, uh, Paul McCready, because it was through our brother Paul that uh, I was able to purchase uh, a wee speaker that I was using here tonight. And through my phone, I don't know, Charles, would you use that? Would you use too? You don't use that? Well, maybe, maybe I've gone a great up higher then. But no matter. But we're all going to hire someday anyway. But is my songs programmed into my phone, along with we speaker, and then all I do is go through my songs and press a button, and along with we fella here, we've got music as well. So, not uh, no disrespect to Elizabeth, Liz, you're a good player, but praise the Lord, that's the way it is anyway. But anyway, uh, thank God for Paul's assistance. He's been a great help to me. In many, many ways, and we joy. God bless you. It's not a better one that Paul married a girl called Joy, because uh, she has brought uh, Paul a lot of joy. But praise the Lord for that. But anyway, I said to some folk, this meeting might be a wee bit different than the usual meeting on a Tuesday night. But anyway, I better keep quiet and go on with the job I've not set out to do. So anyway, so far so good. We got the songs, uh, the ex explanation about the songs. And then your man here, sorry, not don't mean to be a reverend, sir, but uh, the Reverend Kenny, praise the Lord, very kindly sorted out my boarding pass uh, for the flight. And uh, I can tell you he's a real whiz kid. Uh, he's done a great job, and that was all sorted out. I remember many years ago, Dr. Ian uh, Paisley, uh, he said that uh, the only thing I like about a flying is uh, to be down and out. And uh, I must uh, concur with that because I don't really like flying. Somebody said to me, are you flying over, Sam? I says, no, I'm going on the plane. <laughs> but anyway, so praise the Lord for the Reverend McDowell. He kept me right and kept me well informed about the work over in the Isle of Man. So on Sunday, the 18th of February, uh, I had a very bad cold. And I'm just really getting over the third bout of it. But I'm doing all right tonight. I'm handling things all right as God gives me the ability. Anyway, when I had that bad cold, I felt a bit like Jonah in the belly of the great fish that you were preaching about, brother. Anyway, I revised my wo homework for the uh, task on the Isle of Man. And uh, I read here, uh, the preparation of the heart of man and the, uh, uh, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? And that's in Proverbs 16, verse 1. Anyway, I had to consult my doctor uh, with uh, uh, having the heart problem, and he gave me the okay to go. So there you are, that was the Lord opening up the way. And praise the Lord for that. And then 
I had a lovely chauffeur and his wife who very kindly took me to uh, get the plane uh, in the Belfast, uh, Bear George Best Airport. And uh, I can tell you that was great crack there too. We had great fun on that. And then I was collected at the Ronaldsway Airport uh, uh, and another gentleman over there conveyed me uh, over there, a man called Mike uh, Justice, uh, and uh, we got uh, taken to the Port uh, Erin Gospel Church, which is in fact really uh, the Port Erin Free Presbyterian Church, for our church has taken over the work there. Now, we come on to the next thing now. And, uh, and God bless our brethren down there, Jonathan and, and Reuben and, and, and all that take control of the, 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 the screen here. I wasn't even looking at it, but there's a wee screen here beside me. But uh, I'm not, it's not that I ignore it, brother. It's just that I'm so uh, cautious about making sure I get these words over here. Anyway, uh, uh, the, 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 oh, that's, that's the front of the building, by the way. <laughs> you folks can see it in the big screen there. But that's the front of the building there. And uh, they have a lovely wee apartment attached to it at the back. And that's where I stayed. And they had all the mod cons there. The only thing about, it, uh, about the time there was the weather would have skint you. And, uh, but, of course, they did have heaters in the place and all. But I made sure they were put, turned on. Uh, but it was still, still kind of cold. cold. <laughs> all right. Anyway, on Friday the, 5th, uh, Friday the 15th of March at 3 p.m., uh, uh, that was the first meeting I had, uh, and that was their prayer meeting in the afternoon. And uh, there was four attended, and I sang a soul and I preached on Matthew 6 in reference to peace, and we get peace as a result of prayer. And then on Sunday the 17th of March at 11.30 and 6 p.m., that was their services, and thank God they indicated how much they enjoyed uh, the meeting, and they showed me wonderful respect, as I did also to them. And then there was one wee man called Andrew. Well, there he is. Well, Andrew visited me nearly every day, and sometimes two to three times a day. And I, I like to be notified when anybody's coming to my house for I don't like people to just come in all of a sudden. I think it's a good-mannered thing to let people know uh, that you're coming to see them, and it's better to check it out firsthand. But it didn't matter to Andrew. Andrew, he just turned up anyway. Anyway, we talked, uh, he talked repeatedly about the Navy and about wars and about motorbikes. And, oh, dear... And I, 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 whenever he was going on, anyway, you know, it's very hard to get some people to stop talking. And they ramble on, they ramble on. Well, uh, someone once said, patience and perseverance uh, made a bishop who was reverence. You see. So there you are, Mr. Kelly. You need a lot of patience. I know you do, bro. But the Lord gives it to you nevertheless. Anyway, uh, a cousin of mine called Madge, uh, she and her husband, Jack Anderson, who used to be a preacher uh, uh, over here in this land and a few places, and uh, he used to preach over in the Isle of Man. Uh, uh, his wife, Madge, is my first cousin, and uh, Madge very kindly introduced me to uh, a Mr. Roy Ferguson, uh, who uh, is saved, and he's full of the joy of the Lord. And, you know, I often wonder sometimes, you know, not we can't all be going about laughing and, and bubbling over at times because there are times that uh, we don't feel like that. But then, on the other hand, sometimes when you see some people uh, that profess to be saved, you think they had not a thing to, to be happy about because they're that sour looking. Uh, when you look at their countenance, it doesn't seem as if they've anything to be happy about. But... The fact that we're saved, praise the Lord, we should be full of the joy of the Lord, even when we have to carry burdens at the same time. Anyway, joy came, uh, uh, Roy, no, sorry, I don't mean joy, Roy, <laughs> hallelujah, anyway. <laughs> He's the great of a sense of humor. But Roy came to the apartment, and as I was heading over, I started thinking, oh, boys, I'm nearly out of milk. I don't even know whether I have enough to make him a cup of tea or whatever he wants. 
So anyway, he came anyway, and I just happened to say to him, Roy, I'm not so sure there will be enough milk here for this or not. So, but praise the Lord, there's enough to make him a cup of tea and me a cup of coffee. And uh, so uh, a little while later, Roy says, Sam, just you stay there, I'm going down to the shop. Well, I'm not, but I'm not, I was thick sometime, but I'm not altogether thick. I had an idea I was going to go to the shop and get me some milk. So I says, I'll go to the shop with you. So he says, well, you can go to the shop with me, but just stay in the car. So if I, being a good, obedient person, I sat in the car and here, didn't he come out with a whole big bag of groceries for us? Oh, my. Uh, and Roy was a baker in Northern Ireland. And then he moved to Douglas and he bought a hotel there and uh, he's now retired at the age of 83. And, uh, of course, you know what happened next? Here didn't Andrew turn up in the middle of it all. So, anyway, he had my head near turn. <laughs> anyway, at the same time, uh, he was a kind soul. And uh, he also bought me some food as well. Uh, having said that, there was a certain amount of good food left uh, in for me anyway, which was very nice. And... Uh, one day I said to Andrew, when he came in, I said, did you have anything to eat today? And he says, no, he says, I couldn't sleep. He's, he's an English, got an English twang, although he was born in Scotland. But uh, he didn't get it. Well, I says, I tell you what, I, uh, we, eat a, we eat a beef dinner. And he agreed to do that, so I put in a beef dinner in the microwave. And he gulped it into him. And the next thing was, he put the two arms across the table like something like so, uh, and uh, there he was, and then the head started going to get here. And I knew rightly, and he hadn't been sleeping, he needed a bit of rest. So I says, Andrew, throw yourself up over in that bed there. And I says, I'll sit on the settee, and I'll not disturb you. But he chose to sleep on the settee, and he slept for two hours. And then he awoke, whenever he awoke after that, the next thing was, away he goes again about the army and the navy and all the things. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. So I was also introduced to a 91-year-old man, a brother in the Lord from Liverpool, and his name was Jim Gordon, a lovely Christian man. And he said to me about how his wife had taken ill. And uh, she passed away eventually. And he said the only people that cared for, uh, for her over there was the Salvation Army. So uh, that's uh, where he had uh, gone to uh, worship uh, in the Salvation Army. But he was a wee gentleman, and, and uh, thank God for that. Lovely wee Christian man. Anyway, uh, I thought, well, when they're here, I'll show the people around the, the building. And uh, uh, so that was fine, we did that. And then a friend from Belfast arranged a visit. Uh, uh, he arranged a visit for me to visit a certain gentleman by the name of Mr. Murcott. And of course, uh, uh, well, you know, if, I want, if somebody wants to arrange a visit, they've got to have my approval. But I, I hadn't much say in it, really. It was done without me really knowing, uh, or knowing it was actually uh, uh, organized by him. But anyway, this man was a, a lecturer and a writer, and a, he was a very good pianist. And thank God he was saved, and he came over uh, to, the, to the church building and played some of his songs on the organ. And uh, he was quite a character, you know, a uh, young man like myself. But anyway, <laughs> hallelujah, anyway. Isn't it great to have a sense of humor? We need that in life, don't we? But anyway, the mainstay of the work over there, where are we at in these pictures? Oh, there it is now. Aye, the mainstay of the work was really the lady in the middle there. And she was called Nessie, and her husband was called Billy. And many years ago, whenever my dear late wife Betty and I and the boys were over in the island, Mum went over twice, and we hired out a car from them and went right round the island. We took uh, a mother and her son from Macherfelt Church. They had no transport. And we took them all round the island with us. And we had a wonderful time. And, and uh, I like a good motor car. I thought, hey, you like a good car too, don't you, bro? So, uh, so anyway, hallelujah, anyway. The Lord, no good thing with the Lord withholding them but walk uprightly. So anyway, Nessie, dear love Nessie, she was a great lady and she used to be a member when in her young days in the Macherfelt Free Church. 
and she was a real PP. And then the wee woman here on the left hand side, well, my left hand side, probably your right side, uh, she's called Ruth, uh, or rather Joan Rutherford. And Joan uh, is a lovely Christian. She's originally from the Shankle, and she's saved, and uh, praise the Lord, she is a real uh, out-and-out free P, and uh, she certainly holds the fort. That gave me a clue to sing that wee song earlier. And she really does hold the fort, fort over there. She's very, very good, a real loving soul. And, uh, of course, the wee fellow over on the other side there, by, uh, my right and your left probably, uh, uh, you know, that gentleman, uh, the Reverend William McRae. Isn't it great how our brother's able to sing away for the Lord and send out his messages all through the internet and all. And I rejoice in that. I get his messages through, and God bless him. It's marvellous. Willie and I have been friends for donkey's years. Praise the Lord. And by the way, across from the building, there was the chapel next door. And you know, friends, the car park was full to the neck. Full to the brim. And we had only three or four cars or thereabouts in our wee car park. And I tell you, friends, I was greatly, I, I was greatly burdened and have been all my life since God saved me. I'm always deeply burdened for your Catholic people. They need the Lord. And, and may, may nothing interrupt us from seeking to pass on the good news of the gospel. For us, there'll be people in heaven of all nations and all kindreds and all tongues. And that, that's, there's nobody excluded in that regard. And so we must keep on keeping on. So anyway, so much the car park. Well, and then uh, the Manx Radio, they announced the meetings. And they wanted to, they had a desire, uh, Mike tried to get uh, an interview for me and uh, wanted me to sing on the radio. But uh, that didn't materialize because they had to go to vote to all the councillors. Imagine, imagine coming over here, I'm going to go to 10 or 11 councillors to get the okay to spread the gospel. But anyway, that didn't materialize. So what happened next was, uh, I thought, well, if I can't get down the town to sing, I'm going to open up the two doors at the front of the building. And I opened up the two doors at the front of the building, and I set my music situation all up, and I sat in a chair and I sang away. And the people were walking down past the road, and they waving over, which was, if nothing else, at least they knew uh, it wasn't an old pub singing nonsense. We were singing for the Lord. And there was one, this one man, boys, and I could still laugh you up when I see him. And he was coming around the lawn to get here. He come around the lawn. And then all of a sudden, he, he kept, and he came up the, to the front, and his legs kept going. And he looked over, and there was a car in the front of the building, and it was for sale. So he came running over to the car, and I wondered what he was doing. I didn't realize it was a car for sale until he told me. But anyway, he came over, and he opened the wee gate at the front of the ch church building, and he stood there, and I thought, well, I'm going to finish this song. So I didn't stop. I deliberately sang on so that he would get more of the gospel. And uh, he said, do you know who you want to sing? I know him. No, no. So the next thing was, uh, he says, nice singing. So at least uh, he was complimentary. And that was, uh, well, who doesn't like a pat in the back? We all like a pat in the back. We don't seek our own glory, but it's nice if somebody hits you a pat in the back and says, well done. Not right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I get back here. Where to get my fingers going here to get where I am? And uh, anyway, where am I now? Here we are now, Lord, man. And uh, praise the Lord. Where do we see now? Oh, I. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I. Oh, well, there were a whole lot of other people attended the meeting. And uh, I'm not doing too bad, bro. It shouldn't be finished. So anyway, uh, there were a whole lot of other people attended. There was a, a, a nice gentleman called Keith. And then there was an Natasha. She was the daughter of, of Nessie here. And then there was another lady called Gazelle. Uh, no, it's actually Chazelle, not Gazelle. <laughs> Chazelle. Uh, it begins with the letter G, believe it or not. And then there's a Mrs. O'Rourke from Uri. And she was a converted Roman Catholic. And she was bubbling over with joy. Praise the Lord. And then uh, there was uh, another Brenda and her husband, Dave. And they were from Dunmurray. And uh, they live over there, of course. 
And then there was Malcolm and Evelyn Rutledge uh, from Uma. And uh, lovely, lovely people. Praise the Lord. Now, we're on to the last page here now. Page 32. <laughs> anyway, on Tuesday the 26th, our brother Roy uh, Ferguson showed me around part of the Isle of Man, including the Laxey Wheel. I'm sure you've heard of the famous Laxey Wheel in uh, the Isle of Man. And uh, so that was quite, it was nice for me to see that. I have a friend in Balamina and he never shut up about the Laxey Wheel every time you talk to him about the Isle of Man. Laxey Wheel, did you go to the Laxey Wheel? Did you go to the Laxey Wheel? So I'd seen the Laxey Wheel anyway. Then he took me uh, uh, to his lovely home there, uh, and uh, I met his lovely son and daughter, uh, son Alan and daughter Elaine, and uh, their son-in-law Alan. And praise the Lord, each one of the uh, one of them have their own homes, and uh, they're all saved, and love the Lord, and uh, thank God they treated me like a member of the royal family. Not amazing, not wonderful. You've probably heard me say on some occasions, if you're saved, you're a member of the royal family. Well, it actually turned out I was able to say to them, yes, I'm a prince, member of the royal family. And if you're a, prin a lady, you're a princess. So praise the Lord for that. But anyway, uh, that's, that's that bit anyway. Uh, now we'll go to the next bit. <laughs> it's a wee bit different than yours, brother. You're... But anyway, anyway, they, uh, now where are we here now? Uh, why, they, they actually, they and others had said to me that they would love me to stay in the Isle of Man and minister to them. And uh, so on Wednesday, the 27th of March, I uh, detected uh, that Gazelle, or Chazelle, uh, seemed to lack assurance of salvation. So I invited her to have a meal at a local restaurant and we had a very enjoyable evening. But my plan was, as God had given me the wisdom, to try and help her spiritually. And she indicated uh, sincerely how much she had enjoyed the meetings. So we later returned to the apartment and had a very lengthy discussion on spiritual matters. And I really do believe that the Lord gave her greater, greater assurance uh, that she was saved and would never perish. She certainly uh, showed a lot of joy thereafter. I was very deeply burdened, by the way, about Andrew, because sometimes there was an odd switcher or two come out. And I wasn't very happy about that at all, as anybody that's seeking to serve the Lord would be. But I was deeply concerned because he was such a kind soul, and I realized that he needed help. So uh, when he, well, he came to the, of course, he hardly was out of the apartment, but anyway, I said to him, brother, there's something very serious I want to say to you. And I said, you know, the Bible says, if you find a fault with your brother, go and tell him. And I said, Andrew, I'm not perfect myself, but I want to try and help uh, you in this matter. So I addressed him about uh, swearing. And uh, uh, the, uh, then he thanked me. At the end of it all, he thanked me uh, for being faithful to him. And that's just what I wanted to be faithful, and he was very thankful. My brother Noel, that is my earthly brother Noel, uh, my youngest brother, informed me uh, about a Mr. James Thompson who lived on the Isle of Man. And he invented a special bed-like seat for airplanes. And uh, he was uh, uh, given an award for his invention. And he owns... Uh, a factory in Portadown, and also uh, he uh, uh, owns a hotel called the New Beginnings 1886 Hotel, and uh, a restaurant and all there. And uh, I'd been speaking to him on the phone because his father and my late brother Dick were both uh, on the B specials together. And I thought, well, I've got to look out this man uh, because. Uh, I knew a lot of his family and friends back, up, back down around near Kilkeel. And so I tried to get him sorted out that we could have a visit, but that didn't materialize. Uh, so uh, since that didn't actually happen, uh, uh, Roy and I 
uh, went to the mountain uh, to see the man. And praise the Lord, we got talking to the sheep. And uh, what a great uh, conversation we had. For a short time, I whispered into his ear, James, uh, it says in the Bible in Mark 2, verse 21, One thing thou lackest. And in John 3 and verse 7, you must be born again. And sometimes you don't need to preach a big sermon, you just get a wee word in. But it was worth it to make that special effort. Our brother Roy took me right down to the hotel, and we both of us met him. And we thank God for that. And so, uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is the, 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 the last bit of it. And uh, I want to say to you, I believe that it would be very much in keeping for all our churches here worldwide to pray that God would put it in the heart of a young man that's qualified, knows the scriptures, and has a burden from God to go to the Isle of Man because there's 87,000 people there and any churches that are there uh, are very wishy-washy and uh, there's a lot of compromise going on and we need a good strong work over there. We need someone to take up uh, the ropes and uh, may God give us someone that will go and work there full time. I couldn't emphasize that enough, but I leave that with you. And thank you for listening. Uh, it wouldn't be very nice for me to say, as they say to you, uh, I'm not a bit thankful because that wouldn't be right. I really do thank you. And I love you all in the Lord, and you all know that. And I praise the Lord. And I love our brother, Mr. Kenny, because he's a very faithful man of God. And we're privileged to have him. And thank you, sir, for having me here tonight. Thank you. Well, we'll change our position to sing a couple of verses of a hymn. It's the hymn 510. And I want to thank our brother Sam tonight for coming and singing for us and also bringing that report. And we commend our brother for his willingness to go, willing to go to be that vessel that is fit for the master's use. And the Lord, I believe, has used Sam there as an encouragement to the little flock in the Isle of Man. And we do thank our brother for what he has brought to us tonight in his own way, his own inimitable way from our brother Sam. It's been a blessing to our hearts, brother. Thank you. We'll sing just the first two verses of this hymn, and then we're going to have a short time of prayer together. As we take our seats together, I want to thank you again this evening for being here. 
And as we come to our season of prayer, I'm going to ask a couple of brethren to lead us off in prayer, our brother Mr. Howard Mackin and perhaps our brother Mr. George Reed, if both of you men could lead us. And we want to finish up the meeting tonight around a quarter past nine. So let us just seek the Lord solidly one after another. I want to say a word of thanks as well uh, for all who helped in any way today. Uh, with the funeral service of Mrs. Eileen Saunderson. And do please continue to remember the Saunderson family in your prayers. And you may have heard as well of another bereavement uh, that we have suffered as a congregation, our brother Mr. Isaac Banks. Uh, he sadly passed away this afternoon in Craigavon Hospital. Do please remember his wife, Linda, and his family circle at this time, and the arrangements for the funeral are yet to follow. Do remember our young people as well as they go off on their youth weekend, and do remember the services here on the Lord's Day, uh, both morning and evening. There's no Sabbath school or Bible classes. Most of the pupils are on the youth weekend. But our brother, Mr. Colin Maxwell, will be the preacher here at both services and do seek to encourage our brother and to remember him in your prayers. Do remember our mission as well that's planned for May out in Anna Hilt. Do remember uh, that mission even in your own times of prayer that the Lord will make it a time of visitation. The two brethren could lead us and then as many as possible please to follow after. Thank you.